Now, back when you're little, your mom and dad are in a very violent relationship. Mm -hmm. They're married. Your dad obviously wants you guys around for some reason. I think it was more to control her. I didn't think it had anything to do with us because once we were gone, he didn't care. Mm. He, he never, he Why never he came. He her? never came to contact. I never had any time where Dad tried to reach out. I see. Never had any of those loving conversations. I don't have any loving memories with my father. The okay, very so you had no relationship. The very with first him. memory I have of my entire life, where I start my life, is me laying on my bloody mom's body, looking up at my dad, screaming at him, "You just killed my mom." Oh yeah, that's where I start. That's not a good. That's yeah. Alfred Adler, a famous psychologist, he he believed that those first memories in some ways are determinative, right? That they sort of set the frame. And so that's a hell of a first memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now you had your older brother, did you have a relationship with him? I did. We were pretty close growing up. Okay, so you had a you had a male role model in the house mm -hmm. who wasn't completely pathological. Mm -hmm. Do you see your brother? I haven't talked to him since I started talking about it. But that side of the family attacks me not because I'm saying something that's not the truth, but just because I'm talking. Because I, uh, and your brother as well doesn't feel that that's appropriate. Because I'm because I'm making my mom cry. Because the, I see, and so he feels that's inappropriate mm -hmm. in relationship to your mother. Does mm -hmm. he still see your mother? I believe so. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't spoken to any of them. I haven't spoken to that side of the family in five years. Five years. <clears throat> okay, so when you're little, how do you survive between one and five? Like you have your brother, so that's Comic definitely books. a plus. Okay, and you said that you were a very early reader, so so you escaped into the world of fiction and mm -hmm. reading. Yep. So comic right. books and did mythology. you do well in school? I so I tested off the charts yeah. in my tests. Yeah. Did you? But pride I didn't yourself? do any of my assignments. Okay. Did I you, never did. Well, any that's work. not surprising. Yeah. Well, first of all, that's not all that atypical for smart kids, but you lived in a pretty chaotic environment, so it would have been quite surprising had you managed to buckle down and do your work. Mm -hmm. Did you pride yourself on your intellect? I did. I did. I I would carry around both inches of mythology with me all the time, or giant stacks of X-Men comic books, or the complete works of Shakespeare, and just read voraciously. And I loved doing like oral reports and book reports. And when I was in high school, the one at the final high school, North High in Denver, the um, only two classes I ever actually attended were English class and choir class. The I would I would skip every other day and I and I even failed those classes because of attendance rules. Once you miss four days, you failed the semester. Oh yeah. And I would only attend class once every three weeks or so. But the classes I would go to were quite English, English class and choir. Class. Why choir? Choir because I think that actually has a superpower when it comes to kids who are depressed. I th and did you sing? I did. And, I, and I still would... do. I still love singing. Um, oh, oh. And I, I was in statewide choir and citywide choir and sixteen person acapella choirs. I would always go whenever all the schools I would go to. I would go to whatever the advanced choir was and try out for it. Because that's that's what I wanted to do. What did they make of you in the choir? Because you said you were like an unkempt kid. You're you they, dressed badly. You're the, dirty. The like teachers always put me in. I, I when I went to, I went to Oregon one time, and I managed as a freshman in high school to uh, through a tryout make it into the senior acapella choir. Hmm. That was just a 16 person acapella choir only for seniors, and I was a freshman. So you had me. literature and music to mm -hmm. save you. Yep. Yeah. Did you listen to a lot of music? I did. Who lots were of, your favorites? Um, I. Oh, I, I'm very eclectic. I like a wide range. Back then, it was I liked a lot of oldies. I liked I really liked the '50s music. So yeah. I listened to a lot of like Buddy it's very Holly. Very positive, eh? The '50s yeah. music. Yeah, I listened to a lot of like Buddy Holly yeah. and that kind of stuff, and the other uh, La Bamba soundtrack. I yeah, played that a lot. Um, and then I didn't really like the '80s style music, the poppy kind of stuff. I didn't really like that. But I got into uh, metal when I was older. Uh, yeah. So the Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral album is pretty much an autobiography. <laughs> like that's that's pretty much the, the how my life was going at the time. And so it was uh, when I was a teen, it was Nine Inch Nails, Marilyn Manson, uh, Pantera, Tool, that kind of stuff. Right. Right. So the d dark end of the metal Darker. spectrum. Yep. Right. Yep. But, what, but what the more you... intelligent end of the metal. Yeah. The right. I wasn't really into the death metal screaming anger kind. I was into the stuff that was talking about the emotions. I liked. I like singers that have heart. So like Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yeah. Some, some of them where when you sing it, it feels like it's digging in your soul. Yeah. 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 They're great. Their music has aged pretty well too. <clears throat> yeah. Creedence Clearwater. Yeah. 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 So okay. So one to five. You had no relationship with your father except one that was extremely negative. All you saw from him was violence. Mm -hmm. You had some relationship with your mother. Do you think your mother loved you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Some of, that's where the only time I have good memories with my mom is during that time. Okay. I, the best memory I have with my mom ever is sitting watching Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and singing every single song. 
And we knew, I, I knew every word to that movie. So I would sit there and sing the entire movie and we would go back and forth with the songs. And that was the best memory of my childhood. That's, that's the highlight of those years. And are you, during that time, one to five, are you playing with any kids? Are you playing with your older no, brother? Do you remember no. any play? No, 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 not really any playing. Just just reading. I wasn't much of a player. Everybody else would go out and play, and I'd sit with my couple with my books. Oh, so okay. So you were you were now let me ask you some questions about your personality. If mm -hmm, you don't totally. Mind. Okay. Introverted or extroverted? Then or now? That's changed, eh? Mm-hmm. Were you introverted be before or were you just were I, you just I, afraid of people? That's a good question. I, I I don't think I was afraid of people. I think I was, well, back then I was, because it took a while for me to burn that out of myself. I, mm -hmm. When I, in my teen years, I think that I lost the ability to get embarrassed or ashamed or afraid of anybody, because when I was a kid, I made fun of myself more than anybody else did. It was oh, yeah, that's very self-deprecating. Yeah, that's so a good trick. So I had a better fat joke than you did, a better insult yeah. than you did. And yeah, so, well, it would be surprising to me if you were introverted as a kid, because... You appear to be very extroverted. You yeah. smile a lot. You, I think, you talk I think, quickly. I don't think that it would. I don't think introverted would have fit. But I don't. I wasn't extroverted. I was. I would. I kept to myself pretty much. But yeah. I liked the arts. So right, right. I, so, I okay. So maybe what happened was that your interest in literature, let's say, in the mm -hmm. arts, was so strong that if you had to choose between being with people and reading, you picked reading. Yes. Yes, yeah, okay. because so I, you're I, wanted, very I always interested. wanted to learn more stuff. I, yeah. I wanted, I, I like to, I, 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 even now I'll be walking, listening to, I just finished uh, um, Lawrence Krauss's book, Edge of Knowledge, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. uh, so like bleeding edge physics and science yeah. and philosophy, yeah. your podcasts. And I listen to, I listen to a wide range of topics and I try to, I try to get the entire spectrum of of opinions. So I'll listen to the farthest right, the farthest left, someone in the middle, all, all different sides of the topics and try to mm. try to see the the whole side of it. And yeah, so these days I'm just I'm all over with it. But I, I don't think that back then I was introverted. I think you might have hit the nail in the head. Yeah, well more, you're more you're very old tentative people. Okay. Um are you compassionate, polite, or tough and 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 stubborn? Yes. Which one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you had to pick. Um so in general, I would think I'm compassionate and polite. However, it, because of the the survival mechanisms and the the way I had to live a long time, I can turn on that hard note pretty easily. Where mm -hmm. I, I I can easily cut people out of my life. Mm -hmm. I can easily decide that you that it's done and you are you're hurting me more than you're good. And I've given up. I, my philosophy these days is I give up too much time of my life to people that hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I just don't do it anymore. 